Hi guys and welcome to another video. This is the latest acquisition. The Atari 400 out of the 8-bit uh, series introduced by Atari back in 79. It was 400 and the 800 model. This one came in pretty neat condition. I'm very happy and pleased with it. Comes with uh, it, its original power supply US mains. I have to uh, convert it uh, in order to use it using the European converter from um, 220 to 120 volts but uh, first of all of course I need to check the uh, output uh, as this is so so old that um, I do not trust it uh, especially the electrolytic capacitors inside this machine came to me as a bot as is which means that uh, we might step into some trouble here is the cartridge a slot, um, the famous cartridge slot to uh, host the games, the cartridge games. These cartridges are not uh, 2600 compatible unfortunately um, but they are compatible with the Excel uh, Atari series. Okay fascinating elements now. First one four controller jacks really you could have four players uh, at the same time and if you think of it uh, you could use the Atari paddles they were uh, hardwired to one another so you could have what eight players well wow, that is fascinating on the right side it was the uh, on-off switch the power input and of course the uh, cassette player connector and here we can find the uh, machine data I think it's 93 I cannot tell for sure that it was produced back in 93 but um, it started back in 79 up to 1985 and here is the hardwired uh, as uh, weird as it sounds RF cable which goes directly on the back of your TV and in this case I had to look around here to find a converter to turn the uh, mail coming from the computer to female and do just that uh, convert it in order to uh, get it connected to my TV and if I remember this right I had the same problem with uh, Magnavox Odyssey and whatever was American made uh, back in the late 70s because that's the way uh, uh, they used to connect the equipment to uh, US uh, TV sets back then. Absolutely first step when we are dealing always with new equipment that we haven't used before is to measure the power supply output and now we have uh, 10 uh, AC uh, volts coming out which is decent and uh, pretty cool. I didn't have high hopes that this will be working after so many years don't forget this is a 40 year old equipment what we got here so now I'm pretty confident that we at least uh, we have the right power and the lead came up here on the far right and the uh, cable the RF cable uh, is on the back of the TV here you can take a closer look to the spill proof membrane keyboard which is hectic by the way so we have the TV connected and we have a signal this is one of the moments I really do enjoy very much every time that I uh, have something like this sold to me as is and appears to be in fine working state after all uh, makes me very happy um, but then again if I think of it it comes as no surprise this is a very robust and very reliable machine uh, here again the uh, press sensitive uh, keyboard if I can call it this way it's not touch uh, keyboard uh, not in any chance not in any way but um, it's a pressure sensitive keyboard and as I said it's hectic but it's beautiful and it's kind of uh, original especially back 
in 79. <coughs> you can imagine that that was uh, rocket science and um, science fiction. So I wrote something here like uh, um, a basic command even if I try to run it although it has no number so it wouldn't run either way uh, it cannot run because the machine needs a cartridge the cartridge that hosts the uh, Atari BASIC without the BASIC you cannot type a program so the 10 kilobytes of ROM existing onto the machine uh, hosts only the operating system but apart from that you need a basic cartridge in order to start writing your own programs in BASIC um, which actually is the Atari BASIC the initial thought was to go ahead with the Microsoft BASIC back then but something changed during the process due to ROM sizing so elem fascinating element number two if I try to open the cartridge uh, port like this you see immediately the uh, lid goes off and the power is off and I was scared in the beginning because I haven't seen this before there is a switch inside here so in case of um, a mistake like you want to uh, open the, the cartridge port or to remove the cartridge uh, even worse uh, by the time the machine is on this switch makes sure that the uh, machine uh, automatically shuts down and for those you have seen other videos with Atari uh, computers uh, <laughs> prepared in the past <laughs> you already know that this is my only uh, cartridge uh, that fits the Excel series and the 8-bit series for the Atari the only one that I have so let's check that the game works as well because this is the last thing uh, I wanted to try at least for the day because uh, I do have a plan I'll get back to this machine um, in some other video in the future I will get inside and under the hood and take a look at the PCB and the components and what is what this machine consists of actually uh, but for now I think the first uh, look was uh, uh, more than uh, satisfying for me and I hope you uh, enjoyed this so far uh, I'll get uh, back with um, a joystick because I forgot to connect the joystick so I can play a bit around with uh, the minor uh, 49er but before I do that let's take a look at the manual and check the third fascinating element so according to the manual after long time of inactivity you may notice that the colors on your TV screen change periodically so <laughs> Terry came up with a screensaver back in 1979 or even earlier Wow this is really something as far as I can tell the uh, game uh, works fine with my um, loyal uh, robust controller um, connected so I guess we're fine I have many things to do like I need to find a tape a game uh, on tape uh, so I can use a tape recorder and load a game f from the original tape uh, or something so many things to uh, go over this machine in the future that's why I was thinking um, I should uh, try to find my old uh, Atari tape recorder it's somewhere stashed around here in the lab but I can't remember exactly where it is and probably I should uh, change the belt before I start using it but then again it would be great to find a tape first or several tapes with games uh, for the Atari 8-bit series and furthermore I need to test the uh, same games and the ability to load the games from cassette player also on the Atari XL series uh, machines and hopefully I could get my hands on the 800 uh, model 
which is the second 8-bit uh, um, Atari series machine from that era which used to have 48 kilobytes of RAM. The absolute successor to the 400 model is the 600XL, uh, the one you can see here, uh, which has the same cartridge support, decent keyboard and embedded BASIC in ROM, um, but the same 16 kilobytes of ROM uh, like the uh, previous model, the 400. Um, we'll get back to that uh, as well. Uh, hopefully in the future we should have the chance to go over more, more models, more games and um, another review um, under the hood presenting the circuitry and everything. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll be catching you soon. Consider subscribing uh, and bye for now.